Hi! Today I want to talk to you about one of the most important skills when it comes to orienteering, which is staying ahead of the game. My name is Tom and this is Into the Forest I Go, a channel for orienteering, so running with the map and compass. We learn here, we have fun here, so hopefully you'll enjoy it still until the very end. Staying ahead of your game was a technique that I wasn't aware of for definitely many of my first years of doing orienteering because I've been one of those that started orienteering as a more leisure activity. And the moment I learned about it was when I learned about Thierry Jojo. Um, definitely one of the famous runners when it comes to orienteering. At least for me, he was an icon and I was following all the news regarding him. Um, so, for example, an interesting fact, when he released a calendar one year, I don't know if you remember, but Thierry Jojo released a calendar so you could buy a calendar from him and it had some photos of him, but it also had some important messages coming from him. So I bought this uh, calendar for my wife's Christmas present and we had it hanging on our walls for not just one year but actually several years because we just liked the messages that were written there. If any one of you um, also got a, a calendar like that, let me know in a comment. I wonder how many people actually, actually were into that kind of stuff. But coming back to Thierry, he was definitely a runner that was worth your attention. He was, he had a beautiful story coming from uh, someone who was really struggling to someone who was then named the king of the middle distance, possibly also not only middle distance, at least in my opinion, because he was definitely crushing those long distances uh, during his later years of the career as well. So I think he was just overall an amazing athlete and he had his own journey that allowed him to get from the point where he was trying but it didn't work to the point where he suddenly made this huge leap forward and became a top class performer. He, he, he got 21 medals during the world champs, 14 of which were gold medals. That is definitely amazing and worthy of the title of the King of Orienteering, at least in my opinion. Anyway, Thierry also popularized two phrases, one of which is full speed, no mistakes. Now, I didn't know about this for, for many years. I actually heard this phrase first from um, someone uh, in Sweden when I was visiting another club in Sweden. Um, but it, it, it supposedly came from Thierry. And also another important thing that he was promoting very intently was that you should know where you're going to be instead of knowing where you are. And this is exactly what we are going to be talking about in this video. So what is this technique all about? It's basically about figuring out what's going to be happening ahead of you in the very near future, instead of trying to figure out what's going on right now in the spot where you are right now. And to be able to do this, you, you kind of need three things. First of all, you need to be able to switch a little bit your way of orienteering. So this is especially important for those that started as orienteering as a leisure activity, like I did, or maybe didn't have proper coaching and nobody taught them that this is a proper way of doing orienteering. Maybe not proper, maybe better, faster, more effective. A second thing that you will need is spatial visualization, because when you're looking at the map, and you're form formulating the plan and trying to figure out what is going to be in front of you very, very soon, you need to be able to visualize it, of course, right? So you need to be able to uh, take what you see on the map and make um, an expectation in your mind um, so that you later on when you see it in the terrain, you will be able to recognize it, which takes me to the third thing, which is being able to recognize properly different forms of the terrain, of um, uh, growth or, or, or greenery in the forest, 
of uh, rocks, right? Basically everything we see. And this is probably the, the easiest part because it definitely comes with just the experience of running with the map. So the longer you uh, are in certain kinds of terrains, the easier it is to know that, okay, this is a knoll, this is a small hill, this is a gully, and so on and so on. So why is this technique considered difficult? It's probably because it's just a different way of doing orienteering and many people when they start orienteering they are not thinking in, in, in this kind of um in this kind of way. They're rather thinking, okay, so I'm probably here, so now I need to go there, and then they go, and they find, okay, what do I see? Oh, it's a rootstock, is the rootstock? Yeah, okay, right? So it's, it's like a different way of doing orienteering, and if somebody has been starting orienteering like me as a leisure activity, or if someone didn't have the proper coaching in their environment, then they will probably be, probably be doing orienteering in this, I, I won't say wrong way, but less effective way. What is difficult is changing the way you're doing orienteering, not the style itself, because if you would have been learning this kind of style of orienteering from the get-go, it would be natural to you, right? So that's what, what I wanted to suggest. Um, another thing that I think might be difficult in this area is that you need to constantly apply this way of thinking to be successful. And in some kind of a races, some kind of a terrain, depending on how the course is built, depending how challenging it is to go through, how much green there is around you, how rough the terrain is under your legs, it might be difficult because you will be struggling to find enough time to look at the map to be able to project your vision of the future ahead of you. And there is definitely a simple solution yet difficult to apply uh, to the, these kind of moments. And I'm talking about this in the previous video, so definitely go and check it out. But all in all, I would say that this technique of uh, knowing where you're going to be instead of knowing where you are right now is no different when it comes to uh, learning it uh, compared to, for example, using the compass properly or being able to read the um, contours properly and so on. It's just a matter of learning it and I will be talking about how to learn it uh, a little bit more in the, at the end of this video, but also I'm going through the whole process of proper learning techniques when it comes to orienteering in the Orienteering Academy 2023 that will be starting from the beginning of the next year. If you're not signed up yet, definitely check out the webpage the link is in the description of this video and you will be able to see what the academy is all about and whether this is something for you and if you want to join us or not. We already have people from several different countries which makes me um, really happy to be able to know all of them and work with them together and over there we will be going into all of the necessary details um, which sometimes I'm just not mentioning here on this channel because I don't want these videos to be too long. Why is this technique so powerful? So I would say that first of all, because it allows you to stay ahead of the race, it gives you more room to mitigate or nullify the mistakes that are going to happen. So imagine, let's compare it to playing chess. You're a chess player and if you're playing chess and you're not thinking several moves ahead, <laughs> you're not really a chess player, right? Uh, so if, if you're thinking about what's my um, ne next move going to be without considering all the following moves that might happen, might result out of it, you're not giving yourself a chance to actually predict the future and figure out what the opponent's response is going to be to your move. Therefore, you're just making random decisions with, and which are not based on the future. And therefore, um, your, your chances of winning are very small, of course. And the same happens when it comes to orienteering. If you're like trying to figure out all the time where you are right now, you will be moving forward, but a lot slower compared to when you know where you're going to be in the future, because then all it takes is just to run in a given direction, make sure that you see the feature that you're supposed to be looking for. And then in your head is just check and 
off into the next one. So the whole process is much smoother, much, much faster. But also if something goes wrong and you're like, okay, you're running and you see that there is something missing and you don't see something that you were expecting to see, you have a little bit more time to figure out what's going on. So maybe it will cost you to slow down. Maybe it will cost you to step back actually and for a moment be exactly right here, right now without your projection to the future. But then of course you can go back to your normal way of uh, racing after making sure that you are in the right place and you didn't get lost. Um, another thing that makes this technique powerful is that it gives you confidence. So when, you're ex when you expect something and then it happens, it's a positive, um, positive impact, it's a positive signal for your brain that you're doing something well. And of course this positive loop will be going on and on and on as long as you're able to uh, check off the things that you want to see uh, somewhere ahead of you. So that definitely helps and maybe, maybe you know this feeling where uh, you're running and everything is going according to plan and you, uh, and you feel this confidence rising in you and you feel that it's like you're supposed to be tired at this point in the race but you're not because the race is going so well. And at the same time, even towards the beginning of the course, if you make a bigger mistake or just it's like a small mistake after small mistake, you're, you miss this motivation. You don't get this positive loop of motivation and suddenly you're running slower compared to what you should be running according to your physical shape. Does it happen to you? It definitely happens to me. Um, Another one that I think is really good when it comes to this technique is that it forces you to make a plan. How are you supposed to project yourself into the future to figure out where you're going to be if you don't have the plan? It's not possible. So you have to make a plan. You have to make a plan. You have to look at the map. You have to figure out which features you're going to find so that um, you are able later on to search for them um, without looking at the map anymore because you, you know what you're expecting to see. And this also takes me to the last point which is very close by uh, the previous one and uh, it is that it allows you to, or, or again it forces you really to read more details from the map, to read more details from the map because again if you want to have a good plan you need to take care to uh, look for proper features. You need to generalize as well, right? So um, it, this, this technique is also a little bit better when it comes to generalizing because you're not like searching for every feature that you see uh, around you. Oh, oh, there is a rock. Do I have a rock? Oh yeah, there is one, yeah, right? So you don't do that. You just search for the features that you've planned to check off while running the leg and that forces you to generalize. And of, of course, also reading all the details. So that's something that uh, I personally like very, very much because this is something that from my analysis, I know that I'm struggling a little bit and, and sometimes I'm just not taking enough time to look at the map and read the important parts of the leg. Therefore, I'm missing some, some of the features that I probably should check off without any problems. So yeah, that allows you to not be guessing and be more confident again, coming back to point number two. So how do you learn this technique? How difficult it is? Well, the good news is that this technique doesn't require any specialized training sessions. Basically, any race with the map, be it, be it a training, be it a competition, is perfect for practicing this technique. And all you have to do is be intentful. So think about, okay, today I'm going to be focusing on reading the map ahead and not trying to figure out where I am, but knowing where I'm going to be in 100 meters, 200 meters, right? And then on all of the legs, you focus specifically on this and try to put it into practice. It will not work all of the time, especially at the beginning, but with every race, it will become easier and easier. And after several races, it will be just your natural way of doing orienteering and you will be wondering how you could have been doing orienteering in a different way previously in the past. How long will it take depends on you. 
It depends on how much effort you will put into this. It depends on how much intent and thought you will put into this. It will de depend on how uh, much of the analysis you will do after every race and also on your personal predispos predisposition, I guess, to orienteering as well, because talent, of course, plays a role here too. But all in all, it's a technique that just requires diligence, requires work, requires consistency, and you will be able to learn it eventually, which is absolutely advocated, uh, because which I absolutely advocate, um, and I suggest you really think about it, especially if you're not doing this already, because if you are doing this already, then probably this video will not help you too much, will it? Anyway, this is all I had for you today. If you've liked this video, give it a like. Let me know in the comments if you are doing orienteering in this way. Where did you learn it from? Was it from Thierry or was it maybe from your orienteering coach, maybe some colleagues? I wonder how much impact did Thierry actually have on the whole orienteering community and the way we are doing orienteering currently compared to 15 years ago, let's say. And also, if you're not subscribed yet, consider subscribing and check out the Orienteering Academy. The link is in the description. I think this is something that might spark your interest. And I know that we are going to learn a lot over there. And I know that also we are going to have lots of fun along the way. Thank you very much for listening. I appreciate you. And I'll be seeing you in some of the next videos.